When it comes to weight loss, many people turn to dieting or extreme measures in hopes of achieving fast results. However, there is no magic weight loss solution to get you to your weight loss goal. Plus, research suggests that taking excessive dietary restraint measures can actually hinder progress rather than speeding it up. In this video, I'm breaking down two common diet restrictions and their implications on long-term weight loss success. A common diet restriction measure is regimenting to a very specific meal plan. Meal planning can be a great starting point for understanding portion control, finding new meal ideas, and developing at-home cooking skills and habits. However, restricting your diet and cutting out the food you crave excessively could lead to more impulse eating in the long run. This can lead to a phenomenon known as the disinhibition effect. This effect occurs when individuals are more likely to engage in behaviors that they would otherwise inhibit or restrain from in situations where normal social constraints or inhibitions are removed, such as when dieters break their dietary rules and overeat as a result. This can derail your progress and lead to feelings of failure, so it's important to be mindful of the food you're consuming and allow yourself to satisfy your cravings as they come up. A study for Herman and Max saw 45 people consume either 0, 1, or 2 milkshakes as a preliminary test before sampling some ice cream as a final test. The preload manipulation of milkshakes was based on the idea that subjects who consume consume two milkshakes in addition to their daily calorie quota would be more likely to abandon their dietary restraint and overeat, which is known as that disinhibition effect that we chatted about earlier. The results of the study showed that highly restrained subjects were more likely to consume more ice cream in the two milkshake condition than in the zero milkshake condition. However, the authors also note that the effect of preload manipulation varies across individuals and may be influenced by factors such as external food cues or stress. This leads us to emotional eating. Emotional eating occurs when eating is in the response to negative emotions such as anxiety and stress. For some, the constant pushing off of hunger cravings and sensations may lead to a loss of contact with their feelings of hunger and satiation, which can increase the risk of emotional eating. If you struggle with this, a 2017 study found self-mindfulness amongst various types of therapy to also improve emotional eating. You can practice self-mindfulness by developing an understanding of emotions you're body is experiencing and developing and learning to non-judgmentally tolerate and accept that experience rather than using food as a coping mechanism. It's important to note that studies reviewed on self-mindfulness interventions improve emotional eating. Self-mindfulness in conjunction with a nutritional program not only improves binge and emotional eating but also improves weight loss long term. While it may seem logical to cut out all indulgences, this can actually have a detrimental effect, therefore depriving yourself of your favorite foods and can lead to cravings and overconsumption, ultimately diverting from your weight loss goal. A sustainable weight loss program consisting of a caloric deficit and a strength training program is the most efficient way to see weight loss results while continuing to eat the foods you love in moderation. Leave a like if you found this video helpful and subscribe to see more videos like this. See you in the next one.